going to appear on your screens in a moment. It's going to probably look quite familiar because we just did it. But we're going to do it again. We're going to do it better. We're getting warmed up. That's right. And I think, um, personally, I need all the practice I can get. So uh, as soon as the car care is up, we will stand, if that's okay. And together say, Tuia ki ronga, tuia ki raro, tuia ki roto, tuia ki waho, tuia te here tangata, ka rongo te po, ka rongo te ao, humie, huie, taikie. I know it's not a contest, but I definitely think that was better than the council one. Yeah, we're getting better. All right, welcome everyone to this extraordinary meeting of the Community Services Committee. Um, we uh, say a special welcome to our youth councillors who are still with us from the earlier meeting. We've got uh, Vienna and we've got Theo, I think sitting in for Harriet, is that right? Yeah, so we hope Harriet's having a good time wherever she is. Um, Housekeeping, we don't have anyone joining us by Zoom. The meeting is being live streamed uh, through the Council's YouTube channel. Please use your microphones as always. Um, you know where the recommendations are going to be displayed. Uh, and thank you very much to everyone who sent questions through to uh, me, particularly yesterday for the meeting. Uh, if anyone's got any amendments they'd like to make, as usual, it'd be great to see them in writing. Um, apologies have been received from councillors Pete Rainey and Tim Skinner. Could I have someone move uh, councillor Mel Courtney's going to move the apologies? Seconded by councillor Judine Edgar. I'll put it. Those in favour say yes or aye. Yeah. Aye. Those against? The apologies uh, passed. So today we're here to talk about the uh, mass parade. We've presumably you've all read the uh, Report. There is no chairperson's report. There is no public forum today. So um, we welcome to the meeting Council Officer Mark Preston Thomas, who's joined by uh, Ellie Boswick, Padma Naidu, and Michaela Blackman from the Nelson Festivals Trust. And we've got a question over here. Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, you've skipped over the interest matter oh, yes. today, and I, I just want to. Um, I'll do it. Yes, cover sure. that, just in the sense of we've, we have, I think, got a potential interest issue table. Okay, interesting. So uh, does anyone have any interests? No? Any concerns? Uh, Madam Mayor? Yes, just a small one, that in the relation, well, actually, no, it's more just in relation to an interest that's already been declared at another meeting, um, where if somebody has a um, business relationship with somebody who's an office bearing role for an entity that where the matter's at the table, then I do think it should be a turned, the mind should be turned to that interest. All right, Mayor, Mayor, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about, so... Well, it's just a matter that each individual around the table needs to turn their mind to in terms of good governance, so I'm just conscious that I have seen those declared in relation okay. to a matter. I think there could be a crossover, so I'm just giving an opportunity for elected members to really reflect on that in good governance decisions. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Um, everyone has considered the interests, I presume? on this matter. If anyone's got any interests, uh, you know what to do. Doesn't appear to be the case. So thank you anyway for um, checking, Madam Mayor. All right. Um, back, back, uh, back to the show. Uh, so we're saying again, welcome to Ali Boswick, welcome to Padma Naidu, and welcome to Michaela Blackman from the Austin Festivals Trust, and also to Mr. Preston, Mark Preston Thomas. So um, I believe, Mr. Ball, we're going to get Mr. Preston Thomas, if you'd like to present the report. Thank you very much. Kia ora, and thank you. Um, you've obviously got the report in front of you. Um, what we're suggesting is that any specific questions relating to the delivery of the plan um, may best be answered by the members of the Trust, and I'm happy to answer questions relating to the substance of the report. All right, would you like to take some questions now on the report before we hear from the Trust, or would the Trust like to talk to the meeting now? Um, kia ora tata. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm quite happy to talk to the meeting now, but in some ways it might be just good to be able to, I guess, answer questions sure. rather than just um, spouting forth. All right, thank you, Ellie. Um, first question from Councillor Edgar. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr Chair. I was just wondering, um, the report um, is 
with apologies, just a smidge sparse. And so I was just wondering if we could have some context setting, um, because in the trust proposal, it does talk about the seasonal arts and this being a part of that. And, um, and it does say in there, it's an NCC initiated collaboration. Um, and that hasn't come to a meeting. And I just think that that is possibly some important context setting. And I'd like to know a bit about the, the NCC initiated um, seasonal arts, you know, what's part of it. It does start in a week um, with Matariki. I'm well aware of that. But yeah, could we maybe set the scene a bit? Thank you, Mr. Peace Nervous. Right through the chair. Um, as we come out of COVID, there's um, a wide range of events that are being planned on the calendar. You've mentioned Matariki already. Um, that's one of the highlights of that. Um, as part of the um, collaborative work that the Trust has also been doing outside of the mass parade, they've been working with alongside the NCMA, um, the Fringe, um, another of um, our excuse me, other festival um, and event organisers to put together a suite of events, um, bearing in mind that the Arts Festival um, in its previous format was not able to proceed. Um, potentially, the, um, the Trust may be able to give you some more specific information on that range of events which are, they're also involved in. Thank you. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Um, yeah, so the collaborative uh, uh, event, um, Nga Tui Huato, which has been initiated, when I say it's been initiated by, um, uh, facilitated by council, it's by the events team that got a whole lot of organisations and festivals together um, uh, early in April when uh, the festivals were cancelling and um, venues were not able to do something with the hope that uh, we could do something towards the end of the year as um, you know the events became possible so um, it's about 10 or 10 organizations and festivals part of it it's a contribution to a program that runs from uh, mid-july till the end of october the um, the season for arts it's um uh, where we've got the Fringe contributing in, say, August, um, Light Nelson at different times, Heritage that can take place, there's contributions there, various artists from um, and community groups and us as well as part of that. So we were looking at doing our uh, scaled-down version of the programme in October and um, when uh, discussing this with, uh, with Matariki opening it, we thought it would be another significant community event like the Mass Parade could close the season at the end of October. It's really an, um, a marketing umbrella in which the, all these events are being um, um, promoted. Another question, Councillor Eager? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, okay. Um, my other questions are probably um, quite specific to the um, the parade or the proposal, um, and just I think clarification around. So at the council meetings, there was um, in the proposal that came forward from the trust, there was um, 75,000 from Creative New Zealand to be used towards events this year. And so I would, and the report at that stage talked about collaborative, it being used towards collaborative events. So is the 75 from Creative New Zealand being used towards the, the seasonal arts program, collaboration? Um, and if so, I didn't necessarily see that in the budget that was in the agenda. Um, so could I have that clarified, please? Sorry, I think I need to clarify something before then. Just to go back a couple of steps. So when the trust came to 
sorry, through you, Chair, Mr Chair, I forgot the protocol. Um, when the Trust came to present, we presented a, a scaled down version of what we were planning. The mass parade was not part of that thinking because in order to actually deliver a festival on a smaller budget, we needed to, re to reduce what we were doing. The $75,000 from Creative New Zealand was contingent on us delivering this year an arts festival of some kind, which has become part of the collaborative work that we're doing. So in terms of the collaboration, and I'm sure that Padma will correct me if I'm wrong, the collaboration is something that is an umbrella. So we, we are coming in as part of that, delivering the elements of the festival, which we presented at the annual plan, of which $75,000 part of that budget came from Creative New Zealand. That's not anything to do with the Mars Parade. The Mars Parade is quite separate. So the budget you're seeing here is specific to the Mars Parade. And subsequent to our presentation, we were then asked if we could essentially write a plan to present a Mars Parade in addition to what we'd already presented in order for that to be considered. So I think that's where we're at today. The, I think the CNZ fund is a bit of a red herring in this, to be honest, because that's actually part of our original budgeting that we presented back prior to this coming on the table. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so a couple of days ago, um, a domestic events fund was um, announced. Uh, there are also other, um, you know, funds that have been announced since um, the Festival's Trust would have put in um, their original submission to the annual plan and one of the questions at the council meeting was about central government funding. Just wondering if there is an intention to apply for the domestic events fund that could offset council funding um, or if any other central funding, a uh, central government funding has been applied for uh, for this event. Um, Absolutely. The, the events fund is something that we've got a, an eye on. It was announced at the end of last week. Just so you know, within the first day, they had 100 applications for that fund. It's going to be incredibly oversubscribed, as always. Absolutely, we would apply for funding for that. But I think in terms of the... In terms of the timing of the mass parade, the timing of that fund actually being announced, to be honest, if we need to do a mass parade, we need to be getting onto it right now. So if we were to sit back and hope that the central government funding from the events fund would be able to come in and deliver that this year, I think we'd actually be putting, we'd be compressing it. Way, and again, I will defer to the people actually doing the job, but from a governance perspective, I'd hate to put that sort of pressure on the team, that uncertainty and that risk on our organisation by moving ahead on something when we didn't have central government funding secured. That would just be um, not the right thing to do. Thank you. And finally, and it may be, this may be something the officers could potentially answer, um, economic impact. So I'm not sure if in previously in looking at the value of um, when there was the assessments of the festival, um, and I know this isn't the whole festival, but I was just wondering if there was any economic impact assessment that could around the mass parade itself. Um, I guess my concern is it is a, in itself, it's a one-off event. Um, while there are other events that are going to be, you know, Fringe is running their event because it got um, postponed, etc. I was just wondering for this expenditure, um, if there's been any consideration of the economic impact, whether you thought there was any, you know, tourism benefits, et cetera, because I am aware that um, there has been negative commentary in the past, not just specific to this event, but any event that requires street closure um, and can be seen to have a negative impact on retail. So I was just wondering if you could uh, provide any information on that. Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Preston Thomas can respond to that. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, the primary benefit for this event is um, social um, and employment. It's the first um, major event that's back in the calendar post-COVID, and it's very much focused on getting 20,000 people plus back into the um, back into this CBD. Um, in terms of the attitude of retailers, we have spoken um, with Uniquely Nelson. They advise that the mass parade has been part of the um, the calendar for 20 plus years. They are very accepting of it um, and that it adds colour, um, celebrates spring and life to the CBD. 
Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Person Thomas. Uh, and Mr. Ball's also got some thoughts. Thank you through the chair and um, thank you to uh, Councillor Edgar for uh, sending your question through overnight. Um, when I got it this morning, I also just did a quick check back through um, past reports and um, uh, some of the material that was put together at the time that the um, um, decision making was done around the transition to the, to the new uh, Trust Festival. Um, I wasn't able to find anything which isolates out the mask uh, parade on its own in terms of its economic um, impact. Um, but if it would be helpful uh, going forward, I think that's something that we could speak to the NRDA about. Um, it would be good to, to understand that now that it's uh, you know got, got more of a profile. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? No, thank you, Councillor Edgar. So we also had questions sent in from uh, Councillor Noonan and Councillor Sanson. Councillor Noonan, are you... Happy to ask your questions now. Thank you. Um, look, I just want some clarity first. Um, Ali said that that um, that they were asked to put in a proposal, whereas we were. Oh well, sorry, I was of the impression that that the Arts Festival Trust had requested to apply. So I'm a bit confused about how why we we're here today, perhaps um, at cross purposes. So. Can you just confirm that you were asked to put in a proposal? Yes, we were. Um, we certainly didn't have the mass parade as part of our original proposal to council when we presented at the annual plan. And then um, I can't remember the exact, time, the exact timing, but sometime later that day, we were asked to present a plan if to go ahead with a mass parade. Um, apologies, I thought that no. actually came from. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Ali, uh, Mr. Preston Thomas, have you got any thoughts on this? Yeah, through the chair. Um, look, the the decision to um, made by the government to um, move to level one was made the day before um, the um, annual plan deliberations um, occurred. Um, in an effort to be agile, um, the question was asked: Look, how does that change things? Um, and are there any additional opportunities? Um, as a result of that, um, we asked the trust if they potentially if they, that question um, about additional opportunities, and they indicated that potentially the mass parade could be considered, but that would come obviously at a cost, which was subsequently presented um, for consideration to council. Okay, so were they given a budget, or did they? They were given the budget that we provisionally. Well, actually, no, because it didn't come in. It came across as a note to the mayor from my memory, so it was a late addition for us. So I, I just think there might be some cross purposes going on. So I just thought I would um, articulate that. Um, look, getting to the questions um, regarding, uh, it's good that we've got uniquely Nelson involved. But I've been talking to some of the retailers, and um, they've said that the parade actually interrupts their business because the road closure is so early. And I think there's talk of changing the um, the route. So and I'm just wondering if it's going to alleviate some of some of those concerns. Through the chair, there's actually a further meeting with the retailers, which staff will be attending tonight to discuss some of the potential details um, of the parade, timing, routing, some of those sorts of things. I'm also very aware that the, the trust has also been in contact with uniquely Nelson retailers um, to make it work for all concerned. Okay, I think that's, if you've got it in mind, that's a good start. Um, another question I had was, um, the cost, it seems like a lot of money, to be honest, for one event. Um, and I've asked for some figures in the past. The, the um, Arts Festival Trust held it last year, so you've probably got some figures on that. I don't know if you've got some costings from last year. And then also, uh, so I'll let Ali answer that, and then I'll ask the staff about previous years, because we must have some figures on that. Um, yes, so... so as I understand it, I didn't prepare this budget, I have to confess, but um, as I, and I can certainly let um, Padma talk to it, but this was based on the, the cost of producing it in previous years. So this was essentially taken from the budgets in previous years in terms of delivering that particular event. It is an expensive event, but it is also, there are lots of components to it, which are probably not immediately obvious to the eye when you're looking at it and just attending it. As we know, these events do, they do stack up just in terms of hours spent on them and all the various permits, but I'll let Padma add anything mm. if you need to. Um, um, yes, as Ali said, it is based on pre previous years, um, but also just to remember that um, because we're not doing a full 
festival this year, a lot, a lot of the costs also would have been, some of the costs would have been absorbed in the larger festival in terms of infrastructure costs, in terms of, um, you know, um, crossover <coughs> crew, in terms of marketing. And we haven't, because we're not delivering a full festival this year, we've had to put additional costs into the um, last parade. Um, so I just to it. clarify, yeah. um, when you run the mass parade, you're using um, people that are being maybe used in other events elsewhere and they're being paid else, and it sort of crosses over a little That's bit. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just wanted so to get that clear. Yeah. Thank you. And the staff. So the previous years it's been run in-house. So um, I know we've had it reported to community services. So can we have those figures, please? Through, yeah, through the chair. Um, when council was running it, the direct budget um, was $78,000, but that excludes the time of the three staff from the festivals team who also invested a considerable amount of time in the organisation of that event. And that was an average over a few years, was it, the 78? That was the mind that was the most recent festival. Okay. And two years ago. Okay. Two years ago. Okay. Any other you got any other thoughts on that, Mr. Ball? <laughs> Sorry, I think we just clarified that through, through the chair. So that was two years ago because last year, of course, it was rained out. Okay. Well, last year was the, the Arts Festival Trust ran it. Yes. Yes. Held it subsequently. It was rained out on the Friday, but we held it on the Sunday. Yeah. So while we're talking about rain, that's another question. So yeah. if <laughs> The, one of the risks, I mean, one of the risks mentioned is that rain is not is, is a low risk, but I sort of see it as a high risk. So if it's rained out on that day, is there a backup day? Lots of lessons learned from last year. Um, you know, there, there is where's the rain day the following day is what, what we've got. So the that. evening again. Sorry. Evening. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm just briefing. Do you want to come back to me? Because I'm sure. just reading through my... Oh, yep. actually, no, I can go straight to... Because okay. the um, now the questions are got to the Arts Festival and their report. So um, I'm just wondering how many schools... Have you been able to contact any of the schools to date and what their response is so far? Yeah, so um, even before the thought of that, that we were, we were going to have a mass parade where it was going to be possible, we've been keeping in touch with schools with um, an alternative event So and letting them know that if there was a possibility of having a mass parade, this the mass sort of mask exhibition thing would it would start moving into a mass parade with that, you know, so we we're going to continue make, doing the workshops that we do with schools. So to date, um, uh, we, in our communications, we've had a response from probably 10 schools that are uh, interested in being part of it. Some of them are whole schools. Some have indicated that this year they may not be whole schools, but part, partially. We've also got um, uh, several uh, kapahaka groups which want to use it as a good opportunity to um, present in front of larger crowds and for you know preparation for next year. So um, yeah, so we would say that there's probably a dozen schools at the moment that we're talking with. Thank you. Very helpful. Thanks. All good. Great. Thank you very much, Councillor Noonan. Next, I've got questions from Councillor Sanson, followed by questions from Councillor Courtney. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, so my first question is probably for um, the officer. <laughs> um, kia ora. Um, so I hadn't heard of the Nga Toi Hua Town Festival before this report, so sorry if I've missed that. But I really like the idea that we have this kind of winter festival um, beginning with Matariki and ending with the, you know, I guess the mass parade or carnival. Um, and I just wondered this year, have we given any thought to whether that could be an opportunity somewhere in that time to celebrating and acknowledging our essential workers who supported us all through this time? Um, through the chair, um, the, this event um, came about as a result of the COVID-19 challenges. Um, and the fact that the traditional arts festival couldn't happen as it normally does. Um, we're certainly going to, at the end of that, or during that, sit down and really have a good look and see what worked, what were the lessons we can take forward, um, and how we can build on that for future years. So um, this will present lots of, lots of opportunities, 
and the opportunity to also recognise those um, that have stepped up, I think, is a, is a great opportunity to, to recognise that across the community. How that takes form um, is very much a work in progress. Um, we're being um, agile and really looking at those sort of opportunities as we can. OK, thank you. Um, and then I have a couple of um, questions for the um, festival. Okay. Um, I just wanted to check on um, the intention in the delivery um, as to um, whether you're intending to be, I guess, using local contractors and producers for delivering aspects of the um, festival. You can say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, through the chair. Uh, we always use local contractors. Uh, the only thing that we would ever bring out of from out of town is probably a higher profile band, uh, which is generally supported by local musicians as well. So all our team, um, the Mass Pro team is local. They're like me, they go in and out of town where work opportunities arise, and particularly now we are scattered all over the country looking for work. But yes, we use local and we use local contractors. We hire local uh, gear, um, and it's always been that way. Yeah. So, so this festival, the um, parade and carnival, will be employing local people. Correct. Okay. Um, and then the next question, and um, I'm just asking this really because um, over the years I have heard. Um, some uh, concern from um, artists around, you know, them being expected to do things voluntarily. So I guess I just wanted to check that local artists who are going to actually be engaged to perform and create for this, um, if they will be being paid fairly. Through the chair. Uh, we always pay our artists. Um, Mass Parade and Carnival particularly have always paid artists, uh, and I don't scrimp on that money. We have uh, predominantly play, paid a living wage and generally are led by the performers about what they expect to get paid. Um, that may raise our performance budget slightly compared to other places, but um, very few of our crew would volunteer. Very few. Uh, by crew, I mean artists. Okay, thanks. It's really great to hear. And then I've just got one final um, question, which is probably maybe for the room. <laughs> and I, th I really appreciate Councillor Noonan raising the retailers. I guess my question here is who is a city for? I understand that we have around 500 retailers and they provide an essential um, service to our community. We rely on them. We have about 50,000 people in our community and it's estimated that 20,000 people are going to attend this festival. And I just um, question that uh, we balance the needs and wishes of the retailers against the needs and wishes of our community. Who is the city for? It belongs to the people of the community. Oops. And I feel like that... Um, the, um, so, Councillor Sanson, that sounds suspiciously like debate, um, which we will be getting to. Okay. Do, you ha do you have a question? in particular, or was that just a question for us all to ponder? That's a question for us all. All right, the question has been put. Thanks, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, I think next we've got Councillor Mel Courtney. Thank you, Mr Chair. <clears throat> I think I'll direct my questions to uh, Matt Power, Ma, Matt, Ma, Padma. That's right. Padma. Sorry about that. Um, have you settled on a date? You're talking about October uh, in your paper here, but I don't see a date. Um, yep, so we've got a date um, at the beginning of the report saying the Friday, right. it's usually on the Friday, the 30th of October, Good. the end of the month, yeah. Right. Also, do you anticipate it being a similar size to other years, the, the parade? Um, look, well, we are um, considering, uh, thinking that it potentially could be slightly smaller because of the, the later start, um, but... Um, we think that because of the interest from schools so far and um, community groups that we've spoken to um, and festivals that have been cancelled and uh, have got performers ready to be part of it, that, you know, who knows? But we don't think it's going to, you know, we think it's going to be a good crowd. Right. Yeah. Now, other years, and you've mentioned in your report the strong support from um, schools, but because of the time restraints... Mm. Uh, 
are you happy with the amount of schools you managed to get involved or? Um, you might be able to answer that one. Yeah. Through the chair. Uh, the starting in July is late for, uh, you know, pushing the schools to become involved. Uh, we already have fairly big schools that um, would like to be involved at some level. I would expect this year, my prediction is that um, the likes of St Joe's, for example, who have got 350 kids, will probably bring their senior classes. Mm -hmm. So the representation will be high. There'll probably be high group numbers, mm -hmm. but there'll probably be lower numbers within those groups. Yeah. Um, I think, anecdotally, people love this parade. It's a lot of work for teachers, and they've had a bit of a rubbish year. But one thing that the that Nelson does do from a school, particularly primary perspective, is they get their kids involved and they're incredibly positive about it. So same number of groups, lower numbers in those groups is what I would expect. Fine. Yeah, if we get onto them now, and we've got people going out to the schools anyway, but if we get onto them now, they, they've got another turn to get ready. Thank you so much for that, that's heartening. Are you going to, can I just follow through with this to follow up on what's been said? Uh, are you going to follow the pattern going forward and have you this time of half the schools one parade and then the next parade another year, half the schools in the region? Are you following that pattern that's been the case in the past? Through the chair, that's not a pattern we've developed. That's a pattern the schools have developed within themselves. Part of that is because... Uh, Particular schools tend to win, <laughs> so other schools do the off year. <laughs> it has become quite competitive. If you look at lower mootry and upper mootry, they won't be in the parade at the same time. Um, so th there is a there is a definite pattern to the way that that has developed that's not been developed through us. I'd like to get them in every year, every school, every year. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and it does take a lot of organisation. They also have other things that they do, like challenges, stage challenge um, and other productions that they alternate with Mass Parade. Mr Chair, didn't you love her honesty? I loved it. No, it's great. I, I, you know, just when you think you know everything about the Mass Parade, you learn something really interesting, something new, and you learn a bit more about your community, which is what it's all about. Uh, Councillor Courtney, any more questions from you? No, thank you. So next we've got Councillor McGurk, followed by the Mayor, followed by Councillor Fulton. Yeah. Uh, thanks, three of Mr Chair. Just following up on something that uh, uh, Councillor Courtney mentioned, just the rationale for the date of the 30th of October, Friday the 30th of October, can you just explain the rationale for that date? Um, we were going for that date because it's uh, it was the closing of um, the, the, the season seasonal arts at the end of October, and it is always on a Friday um, as well. So that, that's how we went for it. We thought a good a big event like that would close it. Yeah. I'm just bearing in mind that it's Labor Weekend, the weekend before, and we've got the book fair going. Is it was that a factor? Uh, through the chair, the other part of this is it extends it out for the schools particularly. They're getting into their fourth term, so they've got a bit more time to get themselves ready. You've also got that umbrella event where, where we put things into October, uh, and Labor Weekend uh, would be a terrible time to run it, and earlier than that, the schools just won't be ready. Okay. It's a great time to run it, actually, because the weather will be a hell of a lot more settled. Great, thanks. Thank you, Councillor McGurk. Uh, questions now from the Mayor. Oh, thank you. Through you, Mr Chair. Um, Padma Ali, um, Michaela, good to see you. Um, I just want to check a couple of things, which I think, I think I'm OK with this. Cause Michaela, we're not going to annoy the schools, are we? Are you confident that by coming at this stage, because what I don't want to do is to damage the fantastic relationship that you've got with the schools? Through the chair. One thing I do do is I go to the schools myself um, and particularly with the biggest schools where they may feel like they're pressured to take part when they've already got halfway through their year and thought that they're not going to, which is why potentially bringing in the seniors out of those primary schools might be the better way to do it. I don't tend to annoy people. I try very hard not to annoy <laughs> principals, particularly. But no, I was I wasn't yeah. meaning you, Michaela. It's just that, 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 that council councils um, can be seen to be um, placing sometimes annoying requirements on their community, and I just want to make sure that we're not putting you in a compromised position because of the value of the, the arts festival trust to our city. I don't want to do anything here that's going to put you in a compromised position or the trust in a compromised position. Yeah, you're comfortable. You can manage that risk. 
I can manage that, Bruce. I think we all can. I think we're really aware this is a very precious event and a very precious part of the city event calendar. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. And it's, it's, it is. And I don't want to see, you know, from a rushed council, a request from council saying, can you do something at short notice, which appears to be what we've got here, that we compromise actually um, those long standing relationships and what might happen next year. So um, I guess similar question through you, Mr. Chair, back to Mr. Preston Thomas is similarly, um, so Mr. Preston, you've engaged with Uniquely Nelson. And so I just want to understand are they supportive or are they tolerant? <laughs> Because uh, it's a different thing. So I want to understand if they're supportive and are going to wrap around this or tolerant. So at this point, um, we've only had some initial discussions with Uniquely Nelson. The indication um, which I was given was that um, this is very much a part of their normal. Um, but they, certainly that retailers are more sensitive and more vulnerable this year. Um, the more detailed question um, is actually going to happen tonight when there is that meeting with the re with retailers um, and then get, um, listening to any feedback they have. All right, so you'll have to explain through the chair what meeting it is that's happening tonight because I'm conscious we've got decision making to do today and you've got some meetings set up tonight. Can you just give so, us some background? Madam Mayor, um, yeah, Mr. Preston Thomas did talk about the meeting earlier. I'm presuming that the meeting won't happen if uh, we don't approve the funding or approve going ahead with the mass parade today? The, it's an existing meeting which is covering a range of other matters and um, if the mass parade was not to go ahead, then obviously that would not be a um, topic of planning. But probably a good idea to have it, have it scheduled given the pace at which the trust is going to have to move if we're going to have a mass parade. Yes, I've got, um, well, I've got sure. a view about that, Bob. Given this matter, the uniquely Nelson matter was raised by Councillor Noonan at the deliberate at the meeting some weeks ago. I had anticipated that with it in the interim there would have been some direct follow up so that we could have gauged that today because that is one of the issues that does concern me. Is I want a positive relationship with our CBD um, businesses, whether they're hospitality, whether they're um, retail, whatever it is, and I'm and I the the trust themselves may have a sense of that. So. Um, I don't know if they do. I'm happy to hear that. What do you again, want from the again, trust like again I, I just hold this, the, the, sure. the festival mm -hmm. and, it, and the trust in the highest mm. regard, and I do not want to do anything that is going to cause um, um, negative outcomes in the future. No one wants negative outcomes from this. No, um, would anyone from the trust like to comment? Yeah, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had met, already met with Uniquely Nelson oh, about you, this, and, um, and there was, you know, positive response from... From them and that they were expecting it, as, as we've said before. And then yesterday again, um, the Kayla met with um, Uniquely Nelson and it was, you know, just confirmed. Thank you very much for that reassurance. I really appreciate that. And look, look, um, can I just add something as well from uh, just the work that I'm doing in other areas that um, absolutely... Sorry, Ali, just we, uh, when you say other areas, Sorry. it might be worth reminding people of your other role. Sorry, as Chief Executive of the Chamber of Commerce. Thank yeah. you. Clearly, people don't necessarily know every intimate detail of my life. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> and nor should you. Some of us would like to, but that would be rude. <sighs> Goodness, it's been a long week. Um, a long month. So, just talking to retailers and hospitality through that work, there's definitely a willingness and a desire to see things happening in the city. Appreciating that the mass parade does have an element of um, obstruction for some people in terms of seeing the road closures. Actually, I think this year we've probably got more of a willingness than ever for those businesses to get involved in things because actually they're seeing an opportunity. So that's not done. I haven't talked to you, Nelson, about that. That's through the work with the chamber. But we're definitely seeing that people want activity. They want to see the city activated, and this is a way that they can see that it will happen. Just as sure a reassurance I was looking for. Much appreciated. Um, just final yep. question through you, Mr. Sure. Chair. Just in relation to the proposal that you've put forward, and thank you for that, there's just comment at the back about um, investment. It's on the back page of our report. Um, our investment and planning prior to council approval is estimated to be $30,000, which includes contractor fees, consents, deposits, and infrastructure. And, and you'd appreciate reassurance before July, and this may be out of sequence now when planning will commence regarding reimbursement of any cost if for any reason council decides not to proceed with the additional funding. Can I just get um, an understanding as to whether the trust has already um, got financial commitments in relation to this event? 
you know, contracts or other matters. Yeah, and there, there is some. I, I guess the thing was initially the timing when we were going to hear about this was the 30th of July, which was just way too late because we would have incurred a lot more costs around actually applying for permits, which I understand is in train, and there was some costs associated with that. So hence the need to have the decision brought forward because otherwise we will incur. There will be some cost incur. I don't know the exact, the exact hmm. number. Padma can probably tell you to the dollar. Um, but absolutely, there, there are things that we've done clearly in the planning, talking to schools, all of those things in preparation to actually move ahead with a mass parade. Um, but it was more around those hard costs as well around planning permit, you know, the permits required. All right, so there's three Mr. Shear. So, so you've already committed I some think, expenditure. Yeah, I'll find out what it is. Okay. Yes, so the, the figure of 30,000 was based on, um, as Ali said, that we would hear a decision at the end of July. So it's based on sort of investing over the next month, really. Um, so we, we haven't, um, it won't be quite that much to date, but there is um, there will be some cost because we've had to, uh, it's, it has been opportunities to really contract some artists and some, you know, do some work, and they've had they've invested already. So there's a little bit of cost there as well as um, um, course course staff working on it. Um, yeah, and just we haven't got the um, consents in place yet, but we're working okay. towards that. So there will be some. I, don't, I can't give you the exact figure for to date. Yeah, All right, that's one. Thank you. Three, Mr. Chief. Could you give us some just sort of estimates because I'm. Could you give us some sort of just ballpark in terms of what you think your current exposure is on this if it wasn't to proceed? Um, if not, if you can't have an Yeah, slide. I haven't got an exact All right, thank you. Exactly okay. right now. Yeah. It'll be less than 30,000. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Mayor. So next, Councillor Fulton, followed by Councillor Edgar. Oh, thank you, through the Chair. Look, I just have two questions. Um, and my first question is, was, has been partly answered through the Mayor's questions. I guess my question is around subsequent to COVID-19, do you think there's a greater appreciation by the community and the business in general, generally and a keenness for these festivals to happen, having experienced isolation and what that is, and a greater appreciation of why festivals and the arts are really important to community wellbeing? And Pat Sally, that's well, yeah. I mean, I guess again, through through the work that I'm doing, I would say that there is. I mean, I think people are feeling that the need to reconnect with their community in a way that potentially they haven't before. We're certainly see, or haven't thought of so overtly. We're seeing certainly seeing that through the work we're doing around the support local campaign, and everybody there's a very much a willingness to be involved in the community in a way that is a bit more um, active rather than just things happening. Mm -hmm. Whether that translates specifically to arts festivals and events, actually I couldn't couldn't say, but certainly the, the desire for activation and things to happen in the city is definitely something that we are hearing because we do know that that's, that will bring people into the city, it will, it will bring life back to a place that's been quite quiet. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we've seen quite a few tourists at the moment, which is great, but um, we do, that's something that's definitely coming through. I can't, I can't give you any mm -hmm. empirical evidence to support that, but a feeling out there. I guess I was just wondering if there would be a, a greater keenness by the schools to participate because they're aware that children have spent a significant chunk of the year on their own and so actually to come together in, in groups of children together, I thought that'd be it's a tremendous opportunity really. Through the chair, uh, I think probably anecdotally what we're after is normalcy. People want to feel like life is moving on and it's going to be the same. We're going to kick off the summer with the same way we do, which is yeah. mass parade and carnival. It's, uh, I, I would say, judging by <coughs> some of the festivals, and particularly music festivals that have been released over the last couple of weeks, people are expecting things to get moving. Yeah. And I think that the schools particularly will pick up on that in community groups as well. I can't give you hard evidence. I talk from a social perspective, yeah, but I would say yes. Fantastic. And my last question is around the um, end of your report, where you had initially planned on having a mass spectacle choreographed by a professional mass movement choreographer, and you've said that you would like to still have something of that kind of bring um, beyond the schools to bring the bigger community and to participate. What are you thinking now? Do you think that that's something you could have time to still deliver on? It, looked, it sounded really exciting. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so, so that was, that was our, um, our discussion in the beginning of the year, having a big mass dance spectacle, which was going to be choreographed. So we don't, we don't think we'll ever be able to have that event, but also because that particular part of the programme we had um, applied for CNZ funding for, which we which with the with COVID that that went, but we um, we would still like to do something, and we are talking to a group of um, local artists who are doing a sort of mass um, uh, musical thing that we think would replace something like that. So yes, definitely looking at doing something along those lines. Great, thank you, uh, Councillor Edgar. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of follow-up questions. So one just um, directly following up from Councillor McGurk's questioning around timing. Um, and I'll tie it in with my question on economy. So there is a significant number of one-off fixed costs, which normally, as um, Padma said earlier, would have been you know spread over the arts festival itself. And so part of what makes it look economically, I won't say unpalatable, but, you know, um, challenging, um, is that number of one-off costs um, for one event. I was wondering if there was any, and I know that you were asked to, you know, staff asked you to put in a proposal for the mass parade, but I was just wondering if there was any um, economies around you know, say a weekend of events. And I guess that comes back to also, you know, Labour weekend. So you get to combine the social of the community with maybe the economic benefit of making it a tourist proposition where it makes it worthwhile for people to come here for the weekend. And so when we get that balance between the social and the economic, which then makes the one-off fixed costs seem slightly less challenging. Uh, Councillor Edgar, I don't know if that's a question for the trust. Um, the staff, I mean, you might want to comment on it. It's really something for us to consider. Um, Mr. Preston Thomas, what are your thoughts? Yeah, through the chair, um, the, the, the planning time we have for this event is really compressed. Um, we've got a really successful model with the mass parade. We know that in previous years, the schools love it, 20,000 people come into town. Um, the trust is under huge pressure to come up with a plan that can respond to those challenges. Um, it would be a very big challenge then to ask them to reformat um, that model um, to achieve additional goals in the time that's available. Ellie? Uh, if I could just add something to that as well, and, and I totally appreciate the desire for having events that actually attracted a, an inbound visitor market. That's a whole other proposition in terms of what we're doing. This is this is very much a local community event. And if you want to start turning that attention to actually attracting people in for that, that needs to start now as well. And there are channels to do that, and clearly we're working on things in that space. But actually, as a tourist proposition, the mass parade is not it, I would say. And I would I would never want to put it personally in that space. So I think it's quite a different proposition in terms of what this is delivering, which is around social cohesion, community building, all of those other intangible things that we can never quantify, but we really need to learn how to in order then to be able to invest in these things properly. Uh, thank you. So I guess my question then is back to staff. So um, the Arts Festival Trust will be well investing money into a lot of one-off um, staging, etc. cetera. Um, so again, 66,000 of fixed costs. As part of the seasonal arts, um, could we as council not have been working with other groups again to just schedule any of those heritage events or other events over the weekend so we could actually, instead of those things being utilised for, I mean, the carnival part of it is only a few hours. And, um, you know, so is there any opportunity to use that infrastructure over the weekend with other events? So as part of our contribution to the seasonal arts programme. So, a little bit off the topic of today's It's decision. not, because it is really about the budget, and but 66 for six hours 
versus 66 for a weekend of events. So, is so what we're looking at today is we're looking to receive the report and approve the delivery plan for the mass parade. Well, so, we but, but Councillor yeah. Edgif, Sorry. just a moment. Um, I'm happy if the staff want to answer your question, that's fine. Um, I guess just, I guess reiterating uh, um, a response to an earlier question, when council were previous delivering it and we did have a separation of budget, um, it, there was $78,000 um, plus staff time invested in this event. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so it, the costs, I would argue, are not um, necessarily at huge variance from when Stickman Council was doing it. I don't think that was my question at all. Okay. Uh, would you like to? That wasn't my question. Would you like to restate the question? Sorry. Okay, so my question was Who? the trust are going to be investing money for an event on the Friday night. Is there any events that council, as part of the coordinators, initiators, whatever, of the seasonal arts could use that infrastructure for over a weekend to use the infrastructure more than just once so that the costs were spread further and that it makes it a larger proposition because the cost for one night seem huge, but if we were able to use that infrastructure for more things, perhaps over the weekend, as part of other event organisers that Council are already talking to, that would spread the costs. Thanks, so, Councillor. Um, Michaela. Through the Chair. Uh, I do understand what you're saying, and it does seem logical to use the, that infrastructure elsewhere. However, the very nature of the Mass Parade and Carnival is that you're closed in the central city to build some of that infrastructure, which would require you to shut the city for the weekend. I don't think we're ever going to get away with that. If we put a massive stage into the top of the church steps, that would require Selwyn Place to be shut all weekend. Um, it's it, We could fudge it around, change things around a bit to make it work in some of those spaces that are already there, but you are talking about extra costs to keep that done. So so um, I see where you're coming from. I definitely do. But Thank you. Um, my final question um, then, and apologies for interrupting you, Mr Chair, no worries. was um, you just mentioned that um, our resolutions today were... To receive the report and approve to approve the delivery, delivery. plan, mm -hmm. um, but we haven't actually approved 100,000. Um, we only ever made... A, and in principle include a provision and so would we not need a resolution to confirm the funding as well as the resolutions is here um, because that funding was not approved. Thank you, good question. Uh, Mr Ball. Thank you, thank you through the Chair. I stand to be corrected but um, my understanding is that um, um, the provision is within the annual plan uh, that has been adopted and um, uh, is there. So I'm not advised that we need to um, approve that separately. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, it's not a question. I, I um, yep, Mr. Ball wasn't there. Okay. Um, yeah, wasn't quite my recollection of how the decision went and perhaps um, the mayor who was chairing the meeting might be able to clarify or confirm otherwise. Sure. Madam Mayor, can you clarify? To step out my material, so if you could just restate the question, that would be helpful for me. And the answer. <laughs> uh, so the question from Councillor Edgar about Can the um, yeah about, about the funding I, I, allocation. Yeah, I felt the funding hadn't been confirmed, and it was um, uh, the but wording, Mr. Baller said it has. Uh, the wording of of using a provision in the annual plan deliberations was the options were to not approve it and come from budgeted expenditure because there were really so many question, unanswered questions. And the trust, as I can see, was quite obvious actually when, when Ali and Brent came, well, um, Pat and Brent came to a subsequent meeting that they really hadn't had any opportunity to even see where at that stage whether it was possible. It was a gesture of obviously absolute goodwill to say, look, if you really
you want to do this, we'll, we'll try and make this work for you. So the pr provision was to actually to, A, test to make sure that this wasn't going to be an impossible task for the trust. And secondly, then to bring back and answer all of those questions. So when you make, a, for my view, very clearly, and I do know there was quite a bit of discussion with the Chief Executive and the Deputy Mayor at that stage. I went back and actually reviewed the video. Unfortunately, we were speaking while Councillor Fulton had some questions because I was a bit puzzled as to what was going on. So I see this as the, this is the opportunity that's been provided through the provision, but today is the decision-making day where you decide whether you want to spend that money or not spend that money. And, I'm, and obviously it's for the Chief Executive to give advice to Mr Ball, but my expectation is that you have got some flexibility about what you want to do here. You can choose, you could, but, but for the trust, I think if you were to reduce the amount, it, it may just be impossible for them to do anything. And I think that's the reality, that, that really I think they've turned their mind to, to the opportunities. I think the questions from, that I heard from Councillor Eagle were quite reasonable in the sense of from a council investment point of view, that if we're going to set up some staging and structures, is there a value add opportunity for us as a council, which I think is a really good question to ask. But that's not, not necessarily a question for the trust, because my sense is the trust is going to be a st pretty stretched to get this up in the time that's there. Great. So, Councillor Edgar, any other questions? I guess just once we get closer to the time, just make sure the resolutions are legally correct or correct, procedurally I, correct so, um, as we get to them. So, Mr Ball, I believe that you've told us that is the case. Through, through the Chair, I'm just checking uh, the written advice I've received. Um, confirm that the funding has been included in the annual plan, um, so um, that that's where we're at. Thank you. Could I, so, sorry, do you mind yeah. if I just add something? Because yeah. um, I think absolutely the time is now, <laughs> and <laughs> if, if the council decides to proceed with the master plan, we really need to know today because yep. we've just got to get on with it. And if that's not the desire, then equally, we'll just get on with it. Sure. And I think we just need to have some clarity today in terms of what is required or needed or desired. All right, so I've um, got a few more questions, but I'd, I wonder if someone would actually, if I could move that we receive the report. Thank you, Councillor Fulton and Council, seconded by Councillor Courtney and Councillor Fulton is moving the recommendation. The other recommendation that we approve the delivery plan for the mass parade and carnival described in attachment one with a funding allocation of $100,000. Do we have a seconder? Rohan, Councillor O'Neill-Stevens is seconding. So um, we've had, had a lot of questions. I've got on my list Brand, Councillor Brand, Councillor Noonan, Councillor O'Neill-Stevens and Councillor Fulton. All right, so Councillor Brand. All right, and then you're up. And Councillor Bowood is going to be in there too. Oh, excuse me, Mr Chair, we also have... Oh. Yes, Councillor has a question as well. So um, just can we just take one moment? Just want to check something here, if that's OK. Councillor. OK, thank you. I just need to put, if it's OK, the, uh, that we receive the report. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those against say no. Lovely, thank you. Councillor Brand. Sorry, could I just ask one question? If we're not, if we're moving to debate, do we need to stay? Uh, uh, still questions, Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you through the chair. Sorry, I've got a very quick question. Um, so it sort of takes you back, it feels like a lifetime ago for what my question related to. Um, just coming back to the local focus and other community events, and I noticed the date um, being pushed to the 30th of October, um, that the community groups around our region have been increasing every year doing stuff for the Halloween and different flavours and things like that in the schools and, and community groups um, and others. So have they actually fed into um, the mass parade coming a week later and tying into that because there are a lot of groups who are wanting to reconnect and rebuild that social connection through those events that they've started many years ago and have been increasing. So um, it sort of comes back to that local flavour of what's happening and it's sort of like now everything is in compressed into one, you know, Friday the 30th and Saturday the 31st and that weekend. So um, has there been any feedback? Um, 
the groups I've been talking to were, and suggesting that data is a finishing of this the season for arts um, have seen it as a positive thing to finish with the mask parade. That yes, you are right. It is that weekend before and the, the Halloween celebrations as well. Um, so um, where they haven't fed into that hasn't come up as a concern for the groups I've spoken to. But we are aware that that is that is also there as well. Yeah. Could be a big weekend for masks. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's what I was thinking. Of sort of like the the flow on effect of what was being touched on earlier could actually already be there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next on this actually is Councillor Bowa. Thank you, through the chair. Um, I'm actually quite reluctant to ask this question. That's probably why I got. Oh, well, I'll just um, push the speaker. Oh, God, here. Um, However, if we have another outbreak, we need to reassess gatherings of a certain size. What's that vulnerability? What's the consideration around what we would do in that circumstance? And I'm sorry that I had to bring that oh, around the room and ask that question. Believe me, we've got a big risk register. Okay, right, you are. <laughs> um, absolutely, that is that is it is a possibility for everything we're doing, and I think we all across every single event that's currently being put in place, that is something we have to consider. And we certainly don't have insurance against that because we can't get insurance. So all we can do is plan in our current situation, knowing that if that happens, then we have to deal with it and potentially look at another date. Or We don't know what that would look like because we, those things are so uncertain. And we can all wash our hands. We definitely will not wash our hands. All the time. Thank you, Councillor Bowater. Councillor Noonan. I have to find a knob. Um, thank you. Um, look, I've got a couple of things. First, following on from Councillor Brand's comment, um, I think you use the same volunteers for the book fair and for the carnival, and that will mean they will have three weekends in a row being used for the same for thing. So I've just got, it's the Rotary volunteers. They're used for book fair. So that's two weekends and then this one as well. I'm just wondering whether it, capacity is there. So that's just something to think hey. about. I, maybe you're not using Rotary this year. Uh, just can I say, by the way, congratulations on being made president, is it? And so, of Nelson uh, Rotary? And so, um, Councillor Courtney, Courtney is president of the yeah, Rutherford Club. So, the question is about the volunteers. Um, Michaela. For the chair. Uh, yeah, it was a consideration actually I made in my head yesterday uh, when um, Rotary have in the past been able to provide us, particularly around road closures, volunteers. I've got a couple of other groups who are interested in helping those numbers. Rotary, I would suggest, have the knowledge, but we wouldn't have to use the entire team. Okay. We could we could boost the numbers with and, other teams. And another thing is we may be able to incorporate other clubs because we're doing a bit more together, so and we already do that. But um, So my other question is, I, I of course, I've... No, I won't get into debate. Um, my question is, can the, can the trust separate the carnival from the mask parade? Because I'm looking at the budgets and a lot of that is for the carnival. And I'm wondering, I know a lot of people leave after the parade and another group, I guess, come through. So I'm just wondering what your numbers are like and whether it is possible to remove the carnival part of it to, to reduce the cost of 100,000, because I can't support 100,000. And that would be consistent with my decision making through the annual plan right through looking for savings and not doing the extra um, costing. So question is, could the carnival come out and would that reduce the budget and would you be prepared to do that? Through the chair. Uh, there's no hard fact associated with this, it's total feeling. Um, but judging on what happened last year with the parade moving uh, out to the Sunday, uh, we had some very enthusiastic schools who came, but it was mm -hmm. it was dead air. It was really, it was a sad affair because the carnival wasn't there. The one thing that carnival adds to the Master Parade is colour and vibrancy. So the schools are amazing and the community groups that come into the Master Parade are brilliant, but the atmosphere is created by all the other performance, the colour and everything that's brought into town. They are... It, Calling it Mass Parade and Carnival has always been a bit tricky because it separates those events, and actually they're not separated. They're one event that starts at 5 o'clock and carries through to 11. It's a one big city event um, to separate them out would be... I think it would I think it would damage the parade particularly. 
And, and I'm now going to speak on behalf of all my fellow trustees <laughs> who I haven't conferred with, and I absolutely agree. I think that 25 years of building this event to what it is, from a branding perspective, that would be, you'd completely decimate all of the goodwill that's been built up in that area. And I think from a trust perspective, we wouldn't separate it, so it's, we, would, we wouldn't do it. Okay, so that's, that's very um, honest um, feedback, which is what we need right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Noonan. Councillor O'Neill Stevens, followed by Councillor Fulton, followed by our youth councillors. Uh, I'm okay. I, I think I've got all I need. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill Stevens. Councillor Fulton. I just, um, I'm ready to debate as well, but I just want to double check. This is something you want to do. I mean, this is what the Trust exists for, and you would love to put on this event for us, even though it's going to be time pressured. Um, you believe you can deliver it, and you're excited about the opportunity. Look, absolutely. We talked about this clearly as a trust, and when the opportunity came to do this, we thought we felt we just had to take the opportunity to, to respond yeah. because it is something that has become part of the tradition of Nelson's community. And if you look back now, we're looking at four generations of children that have gone through this in terms of primary school children, and the, the point that Michaela made about normalcy is actually really important as well yeah. for those children to be able to see that things are continuing in a normal yeah. way. So for lots of reasons, we didn't just immediately go, yes, yeah. <laughs> but we did actually think about it and we thought that it was an important thing to actually turn our mind to and put our best foot forward. And, and do you think that the chaos that has happened this year, that does co that's, that's partly why delivering now, because you're not delivering a full festival, there is an extra cost to... Um, to get the normalcy back. And, and I, I think that's really important to understand that you can't deliver the festival as you planned on delivering it in January. And so we're trying to be responsive as we can be, and, but there is an additional cost in terms of delivering part of something. Absolutely, there are hard costs that don't go away. Yeah, thank so you. So we, yeah, but you can't avoid that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fulton. Uh, youth, sorry, Council, oh, can sorry. I just add that? Um, uh, I mean, yes, we're really excited about delivering it, but the p people have been talking to and the community. There's a lot of excitement about you know having it because they thought it would not be possible. So there will be a bit of disappointment, I imagine, as well. Thank you. So next, we've got Youth Councillor Van Heeswick. Thank you for the, through the chair. Um, so, Councillor Brand, briefly. Asked about this before, but with the back update being Halloween, are you worried about how this, how it, how it will clash and getting a lower turnout from families because it is a bigger, it is a big day for that age group, especially primary school students. And will you be using the Halloween thing in the theme and the planning? Um, we were going to be pretty open about the theme this year and that, that it could include that and, and you know, past themes as well as just uh, the theme did start off that each year it gets chosen at the end of the Mass Parade and it was about what, what if, what if you had 2020 vision into the future, et cetera, et cetera, which is kind of quite appropriate. <laughs> so but we're going to suggest that as a theme but really open it up because of the timing as well. Through the chair. Yes. I just wanted to say we were laughing, not at your question, but at the fact that we have considered all those things. Uh, it, it, it is a move, shifting it to the Saturday when those other events are on is a risk, but that's the beauty of marketing and Facebook is letting people know. The uptake will happen, I think. I'm not concerned about people not turning up that day. Great, and uh, Council, Youth Councillor Wheatley. Cool. Uh, through the chair, I was just wondering, since last year when it got postponed, you had to cancel the carnival, would you still do the carnival like with the same on the same day as the mask parade? Because I know last year, especially through the Youth Council, we were quite disappointed that the carnival didn't go ahead because we were all looking forward to it quite a lot. Through the chair, yes. <laughs> We learned some hard lessons last year. Uh, um, I've done this parade, I don't know how many times now, uh, and so the enthusiasm is there to, to recreate it, but um, it's the only time it's been rained off in my time, uh, and there were considerations around shutting the city for Carnival. The other thing is that you have to plan Carnival for the second night it would be a different proposition because potentially you might get the big bands in and those sorts of things. So it would be slightly different, but yes, we would definitely carry it through. Thank you. And another question from Who Worship the Mayor. 
No questions. I wish to debate. To debate. Okay, okay, well, I've got a few questions before we get into debate. Um, one is, uh, I, I think about the Four Lanes Festival last year, and Alan Gray, the mastermind behind that festival, was in the public gallery, and that was organised at pretty short notice. Um, it was something for Nelsonians to do after winter, and there was a massive turnout. I'm wondering, given what we've been through as a community over the last four months or it'll be you know, most of a year, when we get there, is there, a potential, is there a possibility we might get more people than we expect for that reason, that people are looking for an opportunity to come together and celebrate? Um, again, I've got no evidence to base this on other than just instinct and what I'm seeing, but just some of the things that um, have been held recently have attracted a lot of people because mm. I do think people want to connect again and this will be one of the first times the whole community can come together and that doesn't happen very often and that's no. a really powerful thing and I think that as soon as you lose that opportunity then you you people feel that so I do think we will potentially get more people wanting to come in for it. Great and, and also last question from me um, you know there has been some talk in recent times that uh, it'd be good to find opportunities to sort of rejig the mass parade in, in, in a way, in some way. And I wonder whether this actually creates the opportunity to do that more than perhaps if it was a normal year. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, certainly that's what, that's what we're looking at uh, for as, as an opportunity to experiment and try a few things. And it's starting off with things like, um, we've had feedback about that the older kids from schools don't get involved, but there has been interest with them being part of a um, mask exhibition, which will sort of be a lead up to the parade. So there's sort of, you know, promotion happening in that way. Uh, we're looking at bringing in more sort of professional, uh, uh, local professional entertainment, which sort of encourages um, older, uh, and, you know, adults to, to this as well as it becoming a children friendly one we are looking at looking at the re-looking at the route whether that you know could be a different route um so all sorts of things like that we also want to acknowledge that this has been an extraordinary year and then it's some sort of um shared gathering at the beginning sort of to start off the mass parade rather than just going into a parade straight away so we are looking at a few things like that Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here today um, and answering all these questions and giving us your thoughts. Uh, we're going to move into debate now and, um, yeah, appreciate everything you put into this. Thanks. Um, we've got debate. Um, the first to debate is going to be the Mayor, followed by Councillor Rohan, O'Neill Stevens. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm very happy to support the what's been moved today. I want to acknowledge the um, absolute professionalism of the Arts Festival Trust team, and I'm glad they're still here. I just my I am enormously grateful um, to uh, these very good people who continue to contribute back to our community. Um, they have a generosity of spirit um, that actually is what we're looking for as we move through the recovery phase of COVID-19. And the comment that Ali made about social cohesion, I think is really important that part of the, the um, sort of moment of going from two to one was the opportunity to really build on that social cohesion. And I've talked about that many times as we've come through the, the end of the financial year and started the new year. Um, certainly the trust is stepping up um, to lead at very short notice and it's got to put them under a bit of pressure, but this is an experienced team and uh, Michaela's given me you know, um, absolute confidence today that she's she's thinking about the risk mitigation and the strategy, the planning on about how this is going to come together. So I know this is a significant sum of money and I think um, the councillor's questions have actually been really helpful and and for me actually establishing the rationale around the, around the the dollars and the answers for the trust have been very helpful as well. One of the one of the costs of COVID is that, that some of these events are now having to come together at short notice and where we've lost potentially other opportunities to have national and international um, visitors um, align with the setup and development mean that the cost is going to be high for a period. 
But in balance, I think I think the value to the community is worth the investment, and I'm very happy to support. I just say that if I had had any idea, um, Michaela, or whoever it was who wrote on the piece of paper when I opened the envelope last year for the theme of what this year would be, which was what if, if I had known what if was coming, <laughs> but I had any idea it had my crystal ball, I would have put that back in the envelope, shut it very firmly and said, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Let's not do that thing thank again. <laughs> thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Just to look through to you, Scott, right. we have talked about not Oh, no, 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 yeah. Michaela, you do whatever you, you yeah, yeah. you're leading, you guys are leading, whatever you right. want to do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Next, we've got Councillor, so speaking for Councillor O'Neill Stevens. Thank you, sir, the Chair. Yes, also very happy to support um, support this resolution. I think taking um, something that Michaela said around what people are looking for, and people are looking for a return to some sense of normalcy. Um, and what says Nelson back to form more than the Mask Parade, one of our most loved and iconic uh, events in the calendar year? Lockdown, I think, really highlighted that uh, sort of intangible value of human connection, uh, being without it for so long, and that value of community. And so whilst this is a cost, um, and I don't think anyone is, is looking at that lightly, it's a cost that, in my mind, definitely has bang for buck. Um, I, yeah, I really don't think we could underestimate the the sort of the impact of going for a global pandemic together, and this will be, uh, as as has been highlighted, the first time that the entirety of our community can come back together again after that uh, in a single event. And so, I mean, for me, it's not it's not really a question of if. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill Stevens. Uh, I think Councillor McGurk, you've got your pen up. Yep. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and through you, um, I too will speak in support of the recommendation that's uh, before us today. <laughs> I'm very grateful for the, um, the Arts Festival Trust coming to us with a plan for a, such an iconic event. That's picking up the theme that uh, Councillor O'Neill Stevens has said is it's, it's nothing is more Nelson than the Mass Parade, I suppose. But I think it does actually is a signal that we've given up much over the last um, last few months. And um, many events, major and minor, have been cancelled or postponed or just not happening and may not ever happen again. Uh, it would be a shame if this was to fall into that category. It might be we'd cancel Christmas as well if we'd cancel the, um, the mask parade. So for that reason, um, I think it's an iconic event that does actually signal a, a return to a new normalcy and people will grow... Um, a grasping for the opportunity to, for those iconic events, so that that old familiarity that um, that you know helps build a community and the cohesion that goes with it. And I can't underestimate the value of something like the mass parade has to the value of the of, of the community and the people that live here. Um, yes, the dollars are a lot, um, but we've heard that when we were doing it, it was seventy eight thousand dollars, and that's not including staff time. I think we get pretty good value for money for this. Um, and I think we've got plenty of little examples little around Nelson where, where we go on the take the cheap or the, uh, the, the underspending option and we live with results forever. So, yeah, I'm comfortable with the, the amount. I think that if we have an anchor event, others will flock, you know, gather around it and it will become a weekend um, that, is, that makes Nelson special. So I would urge also to support the recommendation. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Mr Timmy. Brian McGurk, Councillor McGurk, Councillor Edgar, Officer McGurk. Sorry, Councillor Edgar. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, I also um, very much appreciated the opportunity to, I guess, test and challenge um, both staff and um, the trust representatives who were here today. So I appreciated that opportunity because I don't think that this is necessarily the easiest decision because it's not about whether we we like the event or we like the mass parade um, it it is about um, it is a funding decision um, but ultimately it is an investment decision and what may now surprise people is the reason I say it's an investment decision is because it's an investment into our community rather than into an event. And so, um, and um, Ali said, um, you know, mentioned 
that there isn't a, a good measure of the intangible benefits, and that's absolutely correct. Um, and one thing we do know, though, is, and while it would be good down the track to look at economic impacts, we know that events such as, that, such as these have a huge mental health benefit. They have social cohesion and connectivity benefits. They have community well-being. And so as much as I have a budget in front of me, um, and, and it still makes me, and I would still hope that there's an application to the Domestic Events Fund, and, and I'm sure they've heard the messages about, you know, trying to look for external funding and, and savings where they can. Um, I'm going to stop looking at the numbers and look at the investment into my community, and that's what I'm happy to support today. Thank you. So that's speaking for. Yes, Thank you very much, Councillor Edgar. Councillor Courtney. Thank you, Mr Chair. This is a good news story, isn't it? Mm. A really good news story. And um, I'm delighted that the Festival Trust has accepted the challenge to, at short notice, to pick it up and uh, make something of this. And Councillor McGurk mentioned iconic event. I really wanted to ask the question, is it unique to Nelson? Is the mask parade unique to Nelson? Is there another centre in this in New Zealand that has a mask parade? No, well, it isn't, you see, and that makes it special too. But look, I want to speak just for a moment and say I really do want the Trust to hear my call to retain predominantly the school involvement in the parade. As I've watched many, and my grandchildren in them, it's the children's involvement that makes it real. And it's raw and it's beautiful. And so we've got to have a predominance of that and we mustn't lose it. That's what makes it the parade that it has been and will be this time, I'm sure. So with those few words, I just wanted to pick up on Michaela's remark and finish with this because it was really nice. She said, and she's done it for several years now. She said the event, it's a precious event. Wasn't that nice? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Newman. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I'm going to swim against the tide, and, and I'm not supporting this. Um, to be clear, it's not because I don't agree with the parade. I've been involved with it um, year after year after year, so I am supportive of the parade. I'm absolutely thankful that the team came in today and, and we're very honest about the um, answering the questions that we had. I just feel very uncomfortable with $100,000 spent at this particular time and it would be consistent with me uh, and the decisions around the annual plan, looking for all the savings I could possibly find and if I had $100,000 would I spend it here? Probably not. So I am not going to support it, just purely for the funding. But I'll tell you what, I'll be, I will rock up on the day and help as I always have, and I'll be internally grateful at the end of it, but it's just the money is just my uh, the hold up for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Noon. Um, we've heard, uh, I think, four, four, one against, and uh, Councillor Fulton's going to use her right of reply. I'd like to say a few things as well. I'll do that now, I think, is better than if it's right reply. So, yeah, um, I think I'm speaking for the recommendation. Um, I think cities and towns are very much like human beings, and one of the things that human beings need to be happy and to have good mental health is things to look forward to. And I think people do look forward to the Arts Festival, Arts Festival and they particularly look forward to the Mass Parade each year. We're not having an Arts Festival this year for obvious reasons, but um, I like the idea that people are going to have the Mass Parade to look forward to and the Carnival. Um, many years ago when I first came to Nelson, I was working at uh, what was then called Fife FM, I was a local news editor, and a very talented woman named Miranea Gray, who was the first... Uh, choreographer that WOW brought to town to actually um, 
you know, choreographed the show was fizzling, an old friend of mine. And we had some Friday night drinks at um, Five Shire House. And then I said, hey, you should come and see this, this mass parade. She went, oh, okay. This is a woman who's worked at arts festivals all over the world. And we went up to the church steps. And at that time, the parade went all the way to the church steps. The sun was setting. There were masks. There were drums. There was cheering. There was clapping. There was laughter. And we stood there and gazed at this amazing sight. And Melania started to cry. And I said, are you okay? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm great. I, I had no idea you had something this wonderful in Nelson. So I often think about that when I see the mass parade. And I think because it's been going for 25 years plus, some of us maybe a little bit occasionally take it for granted. But, you know, it is a really special event. So I'm thrilled that um, people are getting behind it here today. So um, Councillor Fulton, I right reply. Oh, thank you. Um, through the chair, yes, I'm going to support this as well, and I'm really excited about this event, and I just want to thank the Festival Trust for um, considering how they could deliver it in such a short time frame, uh, particularly as it came through our annual plan. And, and in my mind, it's something that we ask you to consider. You've come back to us and said, yes, we can deliver it. You're excited to deliver it, which is great. And even though you know that it's uh, not a normal year, I think that the normalcy is a really important point to have picked up on. But like Max says, as a result of COVID, what is normal, we are no longer taking for granted. And when I think about the NRDA vision statement, which is where the ordinary is extraordinary, to me, that's what um, the mass, mass parade is. We have so many amazing things happen in Nelson. And at the moment, New Zealand is the envy of the world. And we should be really proud of the fact that our ordinary is so special and so unique. And so for me to put on this event, we know it's going to cost a little bit more big, or it's not going to perhaps deliver as broadly as if as if the Festival Trust was delivering the whole, whole festival. But it's still important that we deliver as much as we can. And, and sometimes budgets are higher due to chaos. And often we have budgets come up higher just due to the fact that we have to rearrange things and, it, and the best planning in the world still might mean with budget might result in budget overruns. So I think that this is uh, an important message to our community that we care about their well-being, we care about their mental health, we care about happiness, and, and this, is, this is a community event which showcases happiness and how good it is to feel to live in this small city in the best country in the world, and I'm really excited about being at it. And I hope we get the... Um, the large dancing, because that's that's where I want to <laughs> participate. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Ford. Now I'm going to put it. I'll just wait for the mayor to. No, oh, no, we like to do things together. Um, all right, so I'm I'm going to put it. All those in favour, say aye. 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 Those against. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, participating in this uh, extraordinary community service committee meeting. We are going to finish with the karakia, if that's okay. We can all stand up, for we have what will, I'm sure, be a very interesting briefing on the Central City Streets for People uh, project. It's quite nice standing up. And EJ is getting it. She's got it, she's got it. And we're there. And together we say, Kia Faka Kia Te Tapu, Kia Watea e Te Ara, Kia Turiki Fakataha Ai, Kia Turiki Fakataha Ai, Humiai Huiei Tai Kiei. Thank you very much, everyone.